So in this uh, video, I just want to go over uh, the concept of a supertype that I have here called transportation vehicle and subtypes to give you a feel for what that means in database modeling. So what it, a supertype would be actually a more generic sort of version of an entity out there. So we got this more abstract concept called a transportation vehicle, which all have an ID, uh, how a seating capacity, how many people can sit in the vehicle, uh, according to the law, uh, a vehicle type, uh, which is sort of a sub subtype discrimin uh, discriminator. You can kind of see over on the right vehicle type uh, domain, whether it's a truck or car. So there'll be a number in this table that tells us which table to go to below, right? Uh, and so based on the vehicle type, uh, you know, we'll know if we're dealing with a car, a plane, or a truck. That's the idea anyway. And so we just focus on that. So what we do in the super type, like I said, we store all the generic information okay so every vehicle is going to have an id every vehicle is going to have a seating capacity um, every vehicle have a certain number of doors and then we'll have this vehicle type which is a special attribute called the subtype discriminator which will tell us uh, what particular subtype are we dealing with Okay, so I have some domains over here. So I have vehicle type, which is acting as our subtype descriptor or discriminator. I mean, um, are we dealing with a truck, a car, a plane, a bike, a bus, a train, right? Also some other domains, uh, say for a car, we might want to know what kind of cargo type is it? Is it a trunk type of car or a hatch type of car? And for a truck box type, is it a short box, standard box, or a long box? And again, for a truck, what type of cab is it? Is it a standard cab, two door? Is it a uh, a double cab, which is kind of like a, you know two regular doors and two half doors? They're not as big as the other ones. Or a crew cab, where you get four full size doors. Okay, very big truck, if it's a crew cab with a long box. And also, engine type for uh, because if it's a plane, is it a jet plane or is it a propeller plane? And what I, why I have these domains here is you can see that. For particular subtypes, whether you're a car or whether you're a truck or whether you're a plane, you have different restrictions you want to put on those particular types of vehicles. So we'll just slide over here and look at these subtypes and uh, a little bit more closely. So again, the vehicle type, the subtype discriminator will tell us which of these boxes or entities we fall into the subtype. Are we a car? Are we a plane? Are we a truck? If for a car, for, uh, we're not interested in tracking what type of uh, box it has, short, uh, short, standard, or long, because they typically don't have them. We'll leave the El Camino off on the side somewhere else. But typically for a car, are we dealing with a hatchback or a trunk type of car? Uh, and that. Uh, here we have a plane, and for that, we don't care really about whether it has a hatch or a trunk. Really, you know, maybe... Uh, for our particular model, we're more interested in is it a propeller plane or is it a sort of a jet, uh, jet style engine plane. And for trucks, we are interested in box type, cab type, and maybe towing capacity. Uh, so we're not interested in towing capacity for plane, right? So this is where we get to a more specific version of a transportation vehicle. And on those more specific uh, types or entities, i.e. subtypes, we want to track different attributes in that. There's another thing that comes up here uh, on subtypes is that are they out overlap or disjoint? So, and this is up to you to decide, could a vehicle fall into both a car and a plane, right? So if you're a fan of the fifth element, you might say, yes, it does, right? Or, or a Blade Runner or something like that. Um, it all depends. But in, in your model, if you say that they're disjoint, it means you can only fall into one. So if you're a, a super type, you will then fall into either mutually exclusively into car, plane, or truck. You'll never be in both tables, conceptually. Overlap means that you can, that uh, you might, uh, the super type might fall into a couple of these. And so there might be a row in uh, a couple of the subtype tables that relate to that super type row, okay? One is also partial versus complete, another concept discussed in the textbook. And the idea is, uh, Partial means that we actually don't have a subtype 
all the information is just stored up in the supertype, right? Complete means you'll have a row filled into the supertype, and you'll also have a row filled in into one of these uh, one of these subtypes. Okay, and so if there is a row in the supertype, if the rule is there, then there will always be a row in one of the subtypes that is called complete. If if the supertype is enough to store your entity and therefore you don't need a row in one of these subtypes, a car, a plane, or a truck, that's called partial, okay? Um, a partial constraint. And so one might be, well, I know about subtypes in ESRI, where do they fit in? Well, they definitely have a subtype discriminator to say what subtypes you are. But uh, subtypes in the file geodatabase or just the geodatabase or ESRI's geodatabase, always have the same columns. So you could say that there typically aren't any subtypes like we see here, car, plane, truck, that all the attributes are actually uh, up here in the supertype. And so that would make it sort of a uh, partial, right? So typically, uh, in if you want to compare database supertype subtypes to subtypes in the uh, ESRI Geo database. Do they have a subtype discriminator? Yes, they do. Are they partial or complete? I think it's there's a good argument that they are 100% partial because there there is no real supertype table with different columns. Uh, all the subtypes in an ESRI subtype always have the same columns. All that's really happening is you're allowing for a different domain on the same column, and they are typically uh, disjoint. They don't overlap. You because of the subtype discriminator that's used, you fall in you fall into one or the other, right? Uh, sort of concept. So you usually use a domain to distinguish that in the geo database, and therefore it becomes disjoint, partial. It's just that in the database, if you choose to, or in our modeling more specifically, uh, you can subtype off. But then you have these decisions. Are you going to allow for overlap or will they be disjoint? And are they going to be complete? Or is the super type enough to store the information for that particular one? Because uh, although we have car, plane, and truck here, if we go look at our domain, we are allowing for a bike and a bus and a train. And so even with our model here, we're saying in our case, uh, ours would be partial. Because what are we doing for bike, bus, and train? Well, they're just going to be stored up in the super type table. We don't actually have a subtype table that they link to. But for now, uh, I hope this clears up a few things about what's going on with subtypes, uh, completeness, and whether they overlap or not. And that key thing, the, the subtype discriminator. But for now, this concludes this video.